boy, we had some uh, some major storms hit us last night. Is it supposed to be like raining where you are today at all? We've had some storms so far this week. I, Interesting. I was in a movie for most of them. Uh, Went into the 45th anniversary re-release of Alien. Came out oh, and everything cool. was very wet. <laughs> Which great, Alien, a very See, wet that's movie. Kind of ap- appropriate, yeah. Real wet, yeah. Real steamy, gooey. All that good stuff. Yeah, uh, we uh, so uh, tornado season has been, I feel like, pretty calm where I am at least. Um, and so I think yesterday was our first big like, hey, we really need to pay attention to the weather here. Um, thankfully, it missed most of us. It, it did the classic thing of like all the weather apps and stuff were saying it's here on Friday and then nothing happened on Friday. And then it was like really early Saturday morning when things kind of started and it was raining and stuff like that. Um but I was still out and about ye- yesterday, most of the day. I was inside Target when all the rain hit, and you, like you Ooh. could hear it, like like you could he- he- oh, that's he- hear. Oh, that's Everyone like stopped and looked and was just like, "Oh, there's there there's the rain. Who knows?" Uh oh. <laughs> that is fun to be inside a building, a big building like a Target or something, and everybody <laughs> at once hears the rain on the metal roof. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting experience. I, I had a good day yesterday. I was out on a date with my p- p- partner. Uh, so we, I have some interesting stuff to talk about on the the show here for sure. OK, um, but if you guys did not know, this is episode 271 of the Whatnots Captain Zog, where every week we thirst for the taste of legend. My name is Kyle Springer. I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how's your week- weekend been? It's good. It's that time of year again when every podcast's ad breaks are for the Aura digital frame. Are you also experiencing this? No, I have n- not oh. heard this one. This year and last year, I have to hear about the Aura digital frame 12 times a week. Is it like a Mother's Day kind of yes. thing? Yeah, okay. exactly. They hit it hard for Mother's Day. It lingers through Father's Day, comes back around Christmas. Uh, it is ever present and then ever dormant. It, it lives Weird. in cycles like a cicada. I've never heard that one. That's strange. That I hear it so much and you hear it none. Well, so uh, uh, admittedly, I have kind of whittled down the number of podcasts that I do listen to um, on the ones that probably would have played it. I, I, I could see like it potentially would have been on one or two of those. Uh, but I, I also have now like joined to the Patreon of a few uh. of the shows that I li- listen to. So I get the ad free versions. Um, but then also the ones that I don't are like F1 related podcasts which don't have like that's not the advertising that they're d- d- race, doing so yeah. race car drivers don't have moms <laughs> it's a proven fact according to advertising <laughs> no moms no wives nobody wants it i i am perplexed by the digital frame i i understand its purpose whatever the aura is seems like a good example of the item but If I had one, I don't know where I would put it or how often I'm supposed to look at it. Yeah, I it's. I feel like it's just an interesting alternative to to like, hey, instead of, you know, those old lame picture frames, which can only have one picture, uh, (laughs) right? Like you can upload hundreds hundreds to this. This isn't your grandma's photo frame. Yeah, except it is your grandma's photo frame. Please give it to your grandma. (laughs) Exactly. Um, (laughs) Yeah, like it's it's an it's an interesting use of that technology. But I also don't I guess I don't feel like it's a hot ticket item because I've never bought into that kind of technology of like, oh, yeah, I need a picture frame that I can have multiple pictures all at once on. Right. And you live several states away from your parents, but I don't know how much you have that you need to show your parents. 
<laughs> it's just well, a screenshot of this every week. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, no, my my parents are of the generation, though, that lament that it is now much more difficult to get photos printed, even though it's not. They they don't mm. like they're like, how do I get the pictures off of my phone into a physical thing? And it's always just like, well, it's really easy if you just go into Target or like go to yeah. Walmart and do that. Yeah, you can order them on your phone like you don't even have yes. to go, go in. And they, they, they're they like, well, back in my day, we used to be able to take the film in and get it developed. I was like, it's the same but, process. And they just don't understand. That process is more complicated. You don't have to right? drive yeah. through a hut anymore. um so i like i could see it working for something like that but also i don't like i i also envision them somehow getting confused about it of like well what if i want to put new photos on this how do i do do i need to hook this up to my computer can i do it over bluetooth what like and how how do i do that do i need a password what's going on here This does sound like it would add to the number of questions you already must shoulder from your parents as the only child who must answer 100% of tech questions. At least I only have to answer 33% of tech questions. Right. When it's like podcast related, when it's audio visual. (laughs) Why isn't the sound working on our TV? Melissa, she does podcast stuff, right? That means TV. She's on TV. I think I'm the one they turn to for how do we get the Disney plus what's Ah. on it? (laughs) I'm perplexed by the digital photo frame because it seems like it would be distracting if you were trying to watch TV. I don't want to be watching a movie and also have my eyes darting away to like a picture of my niece that's constantly changing. So I couldn't have it with an eye shot of the TV Right. But also, yeah, yeah, yeah. if I don't have it there, what, am I just sitting in a chair looking at the photo frame loop for like 25 minutes? Like, I, it's something that's like a TV, but isn't a TV. And I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know where it goes, <laughs> both physically in space and also go like on a bookshelf. In my mind, in my day, do I have to schedule time in my day to like look at it? You get the Google Calendar <laughs> alert 10 minutes before you've scheduled 15 minutes of photo looking time. <laughs> 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 no, I like I I I feel like because it's not how how bright is the screen? Do you know? Don't like, know. Is it like, I don't know. With this being only podcast ads, I've never seen the aura frame. I've seen like your general digital photo frame you can buy at Target, but not right. this one. Yeah, I, I like I, I just don't feel like the, the frame is really all that bright. And so I, I, I don't feel like it would be as distracting as you think it is. But I don't know. I, I got my parents for Christmas. I got I got my mom a picture of my girlfriend and I. Uh, oh. And we, we framed it and we sent it to Oh them but it was just like the the old-fashioned single photo in a frame here you like here you go and like they it's don't old have to fashioned. think about it they don't have to schedule <laughs> a google calendar meeting app they don't have to up the brightness on, on it it's just it's right there it's old-fashioned in that you two are in a saloon and you're wearing a cowboy hat and she has a ruffled dress <laughs> Real big, big puffy shoulders, <laughs> right? Send them a different themed photo every year. My, 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 my scruff is is much more than the like five o'clock shadow. My mustache is bigger. You've got a real long mustache now. <laughs> yeah, it's the handlebars. I have a red ha- ha- handkerchief around my neck. <laughs> when did you two adopt a horse? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Melissa, I, I've had a slew of I, I don't know if wild experiences is really the right word, but bizarre is is certainly the right hmm. word here. So I I feel like it was a couple months ago, at least 
I think here on the Captain Zog, I I brought up the topic of like, is is the neighborhood watch real? I like I <laughs> I, I, I always grew, grew up seeing those stickers. Right. Yes. And, and just like, yeah, like, hey, this neighborhood is under the protection of the neighborhood watch. Be careful. Don't don't do anything illegal. Right. Someone's watching. Um, but like a, as I've gotten older, still haven't heard like a, how how do you join the neighborhood? Why is, right. this, is this like through the homeowners associate? Does my neighborhood have a homeowners association? What's happening? I don't understand. What do I have it. to do to be invited? Is it parents only? <laughs> Am I not good enough? <laughs> Am I, not I can watch. I, I watch all day. My neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> um. But as as the weather has started to get warm, my partner and I have started to take walks around our na- na- neighborhood every so often. And uh, our neighborhood is it's it's kind of tucked away. It's not really all that hidden. But if like if you didn't know it was back there, you'd be like, oh, OK, I, I didn't know there were some neighborhoods back back there. Uh and it's a pretty quiet neighborhood. There's a bunch of kids that play after school and stuff. They, you know, they play basketball or they're playing. They're running up and down the street on skateboards and scooters and playing soccer and stuff like that. Um, but earlier this week, we went on a walk. And as we are going up one end of the street, walking not on the sidewalk but on the street itself we saw him melissa i can confirm that he is real the guy that you see on all of the neighborhood watch stickers like if if, if you look this up if you look up the like, i know neighborhood, him yeah i know neighbor- the the pointy wide brimmed hat the trench coat with the collar turned up the angular menacing eyes that yes. man. Yeah, I'm bringing it up on screen so everyone else can 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 see if you've seen like this logo growing up or like a neighborhood watch sticker. It's usually orange, kind of like this guy that's now on screen. Um, I saw him. I saw that guy. <laughs> and no joke. It, it, it had to have been like 74 degrees at least, maybe upwards of 80 full on trench coat, had the brimmed hat and then g- 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 he had on sunglasses like he was in the Matrix. Right. <laughs> like he it, just, like I didn't know how to react. To, to, to this guy, because he like. On on one hand, like I are you wearing this for an outfit? I did like you're not from the Matrix. Like you're not cosplaying (laughs) that. Nobody Uh, in the Matrix wears a hat. Right? Yeah, it's not that like uh what style of like a a, it's is it is it a trilby? Is it a no, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck those are called. A fedora's got a a fairly wide brim. Yeah. Right. A Carmen San Diego hat. Maybe not that big. I feel like she has her like big, <laughs> but at Sunday least an Indiana Jones best. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like it wasn't any kind of costume that I could be like, oh, you're that guy from that thing. And you're on your it, way to a party. Right. It, it 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 wasn't anything like that. And it was also like because it was the trench coat with the collar and the hat and the sun glasses like i couldn't see enough of him to be like oh you're just the type of person who wears that stuff unironically uh Mm. like i it was it was just an enigma (laughs) like like it felt like seeing bigfoot it felt like a cryptid like i (laughs) where's he (laughs) what do you think was he also on a neighborhood stroll was he on his way to luigi's pizza what was he doing Not on his ways on, on his way to so uh in my neighborhood the the street that i'm on is kind of a u shape uh mm. and i'm on one side of the u near the b- b- bottom i guess on on what you would say is like the outside and we went down the curve of the bottom of the u and then started to go up on the opposite side uh-huh. and 
he was coming down. So he would have just gone through the U and back around. So I don't know if he was like headed back to his house or whatever, but, but like but there's no other real destination he could have been going to. But I wouldn't describe his walk as leisurely, but he also wasn't so focused like I'm on a mission. I need to get here to this <laughs> location, right? He like it, it was a good brisk pace, but it was also why are you in a trench coat? It's, I, it's like almost yeah. 80 out here. Like, what I, are you doing? How, how old was this man? Uh, Could you guess? I, I would say 36 ish. But, but oh, I, OK. Again, like he looked maybe a little bit older than me, but I, not not so like young that it was like, oh, you're 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 a young guy. That's your aesthetic, your hashtag aesthetic. Right, I, young, I think young of, lad. <laughs> I think about my mom, who runs cold and will wear a coat, uh, n- ten months out of the year. <laughs> who has her raincoat at the ready, even when it's mildly cloudy? Yeah, th- this was not that kind of weather. It's like it was not like mildly cloudy. Oh, it's kind of nice out here. You can like finally wear shorts and a T-shirt or or jeans and a T-shirt and be fine. It was like, no, it's hot out. It's Mm. it's like 74 at at the least, but probably closer to 80. And here he is in like full pants, uh, this shirt, trench coat, this hat uh, like I, I that's why I'm not even really certain of his age, right? Like, at the youngest, he was our age. Like, okay. But I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was just so bizarre to see him and be like, that's the guy on the stickers. I, I've seen him. Who do I report? If only they let me in. <laughs> if only I had membership. I have valuable information. <laughs> <laughs> The information is I saw him. He exists. Didn't didn't know where he was going. <laughs> what his purpose He's was here right now. <laughs> you stumbled into a twilight zone. It really felt like you're it. on and Maple Street and the monsters are there. <laughs> the awkward thing is like when we saw him and when we passed him, we were passing the house where there were two kids playing outside. So I oh. think I saved those kids' life. I don't know. I, I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? It was a wild adventure. Wow. For sure. <laughs> an adventure. It was an adventure. I don't know. It was, it was bizarre. For sure. Um but then uh, I, I, the date that my partner took me on yesterday, we went to the first Americans Museum uh, here in oh, Oklahoma cool. City. <laughs> yeah, uh, we had a good time. It was a little strange because I think they ended up closing the museum early because of the weather. So we didn't oh. get to stay as long as we would have liked. But also... We couldn't tell if this was just like a automated announcement that was also playing. They were like, hey, the they 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 had said on the loudspeaker we're closing in 10 minutes. But then like two minutes before that, they had also said, like, if you have a ticket, uh, like a tour is starting at the top of the hour. And so I don't know. It's like, is that? just like a normal announcement that they can't avoid. And they're like, actually, no, we're closing. Um, But but we had a good time. There's some interesting stuff in there for sure. Uh, They have sections on uh, like the, the, the history of uh, like them being warriors and their history through the military. They have stuff Mm. on clothes and leisurely life and poetry. Ah. They have stuff on sports. You could like hear like here's a bunch of like first American athletes and stuff like that. Um, nice. I got to see there was one one thing at the end that we we saw uh, was interesting because it was behind 
not only the like protective glass that like most everything else is, uh, but it was behind like fogged glass too, uh, because it was a very sacred religious uh, item, oh. and they had like small ho- holes you could look <laughs> through to see parts of it. Mm. Um, and it was it was there with permission by some of the local t- tribes. Um, but it was, yeah, a very sacred, highly religious, like, garment for, like, some oh. g- 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 ghost dance uh, thing. Oh. And to members of the tribe, this is something that they, like, are not supposed to look at, are not supposed to. Oh. Yeah. So it was, it was like, we, we have it with their permission, but there's a lot of people who are very uncomfortable with looking at this thing. So mm. if you want to, like, here's certain, certain bits that you can see. But I, I was like, huh, I don't think I've seen anything like yeah. that in a museum. Yeah. Um, That's fascinating. So that was, that was in, interesting for sure. Um, but after that, one of the things that we went to go do on our our our, our date is we went out to eat uh, and we went to a burger joint called Bunny's Onion Burger. I, this must have been one of the things you looked up when you were looking up information yes. on Oklahoma when I first moved out here. You were like, have you had an onion burger yet? And I was like, well, I don't, I'm not really into onions. I, I don't really like them. Uh, so I probably wouldn't get an onion burger. Uh, but the name of this re- restaurant was Bunny's Onion Burgers, um, and they have a robot that will come out and serve you your food. Oh, robot. Yeah. yeah so uh, it, 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 we went in and it's this burger joint. It's kind of like a diner. Uh, b- but it, yeah, they, they, they just make your standard fair kind of greasy burgers and, and stuff like that. They have uh, other things you, you can get there too, but when your appetizer or your main course is ready, they set it on this little robot back behind the bar. It's maybe about, it's like up to my, my, like just underneath my chest is maybe about okay. how tall it is. Um, Sitting or standing? Standing. So it's it's not humanoid. Um, okay. It, it is this kind of cylindrical uh, robot that kind of rolls around. Think of like a Roomba, but like cylindrical <laughs> rather than flat. Uh, oh. And the place, uh, not where its stomach would be, that's not the right thing, but like the central <laughs> a- area, there are like slats where they can put the plates on it and and stuff like that and it will like you kind of program it to be like go to table six and when they put the food on there and hit the number six it will kind of travel to your table uh and it it talks it has a a screen (gasps) for a face and so as it comes around the corner you'll hear it like i'm coming (laughs) like here i am i've got your food wow um oh my gosh and yeah it gets there it turns to the side so you can grab your food um it's meant to look like a cat which is strange considering the name of the restaurant being a bunny so they put a little, little bunny tail on it, which is just like a big oh. giant cotton ball on 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 mm. on the back there. Uh, but you can pet it like they they will give you permission to like pet the robot because it has little cat ear looking things on on top. Yes. Well, are they are they furry or are they plastic? They are plastic. They are harks. They okay. are sensors. You're just petting plastic. Yeah, it's not actual <laughs> fur. Uh, but you can touch it. And when when if if you touch it like too quickly or in the wrong spot, it, 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 it'll go like, hey, don't touch my ears <laughs> and Aww. stuff like that. Um, so. So, yeah, we had we had a, b- a blast with this uh, robo, this r- 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 robot w- waitress that we that we had. Wow. Uh, there. It was fantastic. That's the future. Right? They got everything in Oklahoma City. <laughs> I don't know if there's a local robot I can go see. 
that was the, like I was kind of surprised of like we have a restaurant here that like has a robot that serves you food. it's not it's not the the ones that are I, I i guess the big hit now where it is the robot that makes the food mm-hmm. um but it will serve you the food there and, and we still had like a waitress that was still kind of taking care of us and stuff like that because uh we did have an incident where our appetizer went to the wrong table <laughs> oh bad robot uh, yeah bad robot <laughs> um, but uh but but yeah it's it's because they they hit, like the waitress hit the wrong table mm. number it's like oh i meant to hit Ro- that one robot there, innocent so. yeah <laughs> robot you remember innocent the year on your on your charges. review show movie tropes bingo sheet you had robot framed for crime <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the first time you've been able to cross off a bingo card in no, your daily life. No, those are my mozzarella <laughs> sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We 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 had a blast with that though. Um That but, sounds fun. But yeah, you should look it up and see if there's any kind of restaurant like that near near you. Gee, is there a, a restaurant that has a robot waitress near me? St. Louis robot. Okay, we've got robotic competitions. The grocery chain Schnooks does have like a tall pillar that scoots mm. around and will like automatically do inventory on the shelves. So sometimes you'll walk past Tally the robot, but interesting. Uh, nothing quite yeah. like that. We have one in our grocery store in Winco that is basically just a giant like I'm polishing the floor robot and it's automatic and it kind of goes around. But it knows to like stop like I, if it sees people or will go around them and stuff and they put big old googly eyes on, on it. <laughs> it looks like there was a robot like pop up restaurant experience last August. Mm. Who knows? You might get one this summer then. I'll look. I'll find a robot. We there's a local park that is a smoky bear animatronic. Okay. But not a robot robot. (laughs) Interesting. Woman knocks over invent Woman knocks over inventory robot at Bridgeton Schnooks. A woman oh, no. who knocked over a grocery store robot named Tally earlier this year now faces a felony charge. Wow, a felony. How Don't dare you? Don't do that to you. robot. Wow. That's that's got a wild felony charge. This must have been like malicious intent like I hate you schnooks and then Prime. bam knocks over. Yeah knocks over tally okay las fuentes mexican restaurant had something like what you're talking about but it doesn't have character uh it's just like a set of trays that scoots around on its own wheels it doesn't have cat ears and it doesn't talk yeah okay yeah that that's it's very similar but yeah that that was that was that was it. I'd even take a person dressed like a robot bringing me my food. <laughs> right? They have to like <laughs> arr, 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 <laughs> the whole way there. Yeah. Beep up boop. Here are your onion rings. Oh man. Okay, okay. Uh so I the most of the rest of the stuff that we have to talk about here is kind of movie or television related, except yeah. for clapping skills. Yeah. So, so what 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 is this? I I'm I, I like that question. we have gotten in the ha- habit of like you write down only clapping skills. I write down own, <laughs> Just only Robo Burger with with an exclamation mark. Right. Uh. <laughs> I I host bar trivia. Mm-hmm. I picked up an extra hosting gig this week, and one of our questions was, Anna Kendrick showed off her clapping skills performing cups in the audition scene for this acapella movie. And the answer's pitch perfect, and it's written much more artfully than that. But the important part is that this question used the phrase clapping skills. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you mean clapping skills? This isn't 
a gradient. There's clapping and there's not clapping, but nobody's good or bad at clapping. Melissa, I strongly disagree. Well, so you think there's I, bad I, clappers? There, so the, this is maybe getting into semantics, which is exactly why we are here. Uh, there are people that just don't have rhythm and can't clap <laughs> on beat. They can clap like they can physically do the motion, but just for whatever reason, can't get it on beat. OK, but does all clapping need to be done on beat? If you're clapping a lot, if you're doing the if clap, it's... clap, stomp along with, you know, we will rock you. That's one thing. But if you just go to like your kid's school play, you don't have to clap if, on rhythm then. Right. Right. If, if you're like clapping for a speech or something like that, there is no set rhythm, though. I don't know about you, but I always find it kind of strange when everyone's claps start to sync up at, at, at uh, things like that. I feel like I then have to v- vary it up. Be like, no, don't clap mm-hmm. on my beat. <laughs> Clap on your own. Beat. This is mine. Uh, Get your yeah. own. Yeah. Um, but I, I, like growing up when when I was still really involved in my church, we would do a lot of like hanging and stuff and stuff like mm. that. And so we would clap a little along to, to 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 the songs. And every now and then you'd come across someone who was just really bad at staying on beat and it would become distracting or it, it, like it would get other p- people off beat and stuff and it, like you would then start to pay like can he get it on on beat is anyone helping him and like oh no they got <laughs> d- d- distracted like, it, 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 it just Jesus, like, help him. kind of yeah just derailed the whole <laughs> jesus, situation jesus take the hands <laughs> right yeah um so in in that sense yes i think it it takes some clapping okay. skills. I that falls more under rhythm skills. Right. I which guess. is where I was like, this is maybe semantics, right? Like yes. it's rhythm, yes. not necessarily I, clapping. My mom claps so loud. Mm. I don't know how she does it. I think this is her mutant so, power. The cup. There's maybe there's something about her hard, dry hands. That produces a greater sound than For anyone dry, else I've ever eyes. heard. <laughs> <laughs> my my mom does not have the same pampering instincts that I have, mm-hmm. and I every time I see her, I'm like, she needs moisturizer. She looks dry, <laughs> but it's like a not enough. It's not like that makes her unhealthy. It's not right, like a yeah, hygiene yeah. issue. So yeah. I can't make her put lotion on her hands. But it's something <laughs> I think about. It's one of the major differences between the two of us is that I put lotion on my hands and she doesn't. But she's got a supersonic ability. But again, that's yeah. the louder your claps are isn't a measure of good or bad. <laughs> Quality isn't part of the game here. If, if, if you're a quiet clapper you're a terrible human that, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. one of my In- biggest pet peeves is when people tell me to clap i want to clap when i choose please clap <laughs> I, I i'll choose i don't want i do not like the feeling of being dragged along into a group clap that i didn't agree with how how awkward or confident do you feel when you are the one that starts the clap Sometimes I'll do it at the end of a movie, which right, I yeah, remember that, great when I was scenario. Do you remember a lot more people clapping at the end of a movie when you were a kid? Because I feel like societally we used to do it a lot more. And now it doesn't happen except for like Avengers Endgame or something. It, it really depends on the m- movie and the tone of it. And yeah like how exciting and how into it how like emotionally invested we are in it because i've seen some really really good movies but they're kind of dour and sad and so i like afterwards (laughs) i I don't want to be like whoa yes yeah awesome bravo bravo right (laughs) that zone was interesting (laughs) yeah no don't clap i mean like I'm sure it was a great movie, but no. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Um, but yeah, then there are like 
I've been emotionally invested in the Marvel Cinematic Universe for so mm. long. Here's a movie with so much just like fan payoff and stuff like that. And I had a good time. I'm laughing. I'm crying. Yes, that was an awesome experience. Thank you. Right. Um, so I don't know. Like, I, I don't I don't remember the last one that I clapped for. I know I've clapped at a movie in the last handful of months. I'll have to review my and I, over our break. I'll review my list and I'll get back to you. I, I feel like we've also talked about this topic on the captain's log before. Of like, what was the last movie that you clapped? Yes. <laughs> I, I remember you brought the news item of new Benedict Cumberbatch movie gets like five minutes standing ovation at some film festival. This was power which is what got the us, dog, right? Right. Yeah. And we're, we didn't have context for it at the time, but now that I've become a lot more of a film nerd, that's just a film festival thing. If you go to yeah. a film festival, when it's the world premiere clap. for this movie anywhere and the celebs are all there, they clap forever. Not to disparage yeah. the great work of Benedict Cumberbatch and company. For the lovely film, The Power of the Dog. But I don't Great think that movie. was a record setter. Love yeah. Power of the Dog. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, I say we take a quick break for some housekeeping. And when we come back, we got a bunch of movies we've been watching, TV shows, yes. uh, some trailers to, to t talk about, all that good stuff. Uh, so we will be right back. Thank you so much for checking out this podcast. We hope you're enjoying it. If you didn't know, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots and a lot of hard work goes into making them. So we would love it if you check them all out. But none of this is possible without your support. Head over to patreon.com slash the whatnots and you can get access to over 40 hours of exclusive content, including our Patreon first podcast, The Pilots Club, when you sign up at our $3 tier. Of course, there is a free version of the Pilots Club available, but episodes are exclusive to our Patreon for two years before they hit the free feeds. If you're interested in buying merch, we have shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more for sale over at the whatnots.com slash store. Another great way to help us out is by subscribing and leaving a nice rating and review on your podcasting app of choice. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel for video versions of the show, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, you can always find out more information about the shows we make on our website, thewhatnots.com. All right, we are back. Once again, a big shout out to our Patreon supporters. We love you a lot. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. That means a ton. Uh, over on the Pilots Club, this last month we talked about the pilot of Shogun, which I just finished that show. It is incredible. Uh, the finale came out, I guess, last week, uh, last Tuesday. Um, yeah, incredible show. Highly recommend it. We only talked about the pilot of that one. Uh, however, in next week weekend, we will be recording our Pilots Club on Pan Am. Um, Melissa, what what inspired you to 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 pick Pan Am? I d booked a flight recently for the first time in like ten years. Ooh. I come from a road trip family. We don't fly, but my mom and I are going to Disney World later this year, and there's That's no way awesome. we're spending two days driving to Orlando. Uh, so just thinking about flights, I thought of this old show from, I think, the late aughts it was called Pan 2011. Am. Oh, thank you. 2011, uh, which is set in like the big 1960s travel boom when travel was becoming a lot more accessible, very glamorous. And all these young women had the opportunity to become flight attendants and really make a career for themselves in a way that young women hadn't had the ability to before. So I think that's yeah. the focal point of the show is we follow uh, a set of stewardesses along their flights. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. So uh, get excited about that. It stars Christina Ricci, Margot <clears throat> Robbie, David Harbour's in this. Uh, I don't remember the actress's name, but the girl who plays Tommy Shelby's girlfriend slash wife in the Peaky Blinders. 
uh, her. She's in in that too, at least for a little bit. Um, so interesting star studded cast. Um, but show only lasted one season and then Margot Robbie went on to make uh, Wolf of Wall Street that that next year. So she got ah. launched into stardom there. Uh, so good stuff with all of that. Keep an eye out. However, also in the near future on the free tier of the Pilots Club, our episode on Yasuke uh, will be out the first Friday of the month. Um, so be on the lookout for that one. Over here on the Captain's Log, last episode, Melissa and I were drawing Pokemon from memory. We had a blast with that. Uh, good Lord, go check out our Magmars. <laughs> I, it's <laughs> harder what, than you think. It really you is, think you yeah. remember what Pokemon look like, especially that core 151. Yeah. Nice try getting that communicated <laughs> down to your hand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then over on the review show, we just concluded what we called Apple April, uh, in which we watched uh, two TV series available on Apple T TV Plus. Uh, the first week, a couple of episodes back, we we watched he Hello Tomorrow. Uh, but on our most recent one, we watched the first season of Slow Horses, uh, a spy show all following some some rejects of a mi5 i get, i guess technically they're still mi5 and they've not been rejected from mi5 they are but just they've been the, demoted yeah. as far down as you can go yeah indeed uh gary oldman is in that one and uh plays this curmudgeonly old guy that farts himself awake uh all sorts of stuff <laughs> like that he's just he's just as crass as can be uh and it, it is a delight to watch but yeah go check that out uh we had a fun time talking about slow horses uh but yeah i think that is about it for housekeeping right now so Let's let's let, let, let me start this one off with our pop culture lightning round, because we don't have much okay. in this one here. Yeah. We can just knock this out real fast here. Uh, so in our pop culture lightning round, Mon Pa Kent have been cast in James Gunn's uh, newest Superman movie. Um, Pruitt Taylor Vince has been cast as Jonathan Kent and Neva ha Howell as Martha. Um, I, I feel like I should say that I'm not super familiar with them, but Pruitt Taylor Vince is in a lot of stuff just as like mm. minor characters. Um, cool. He's, uh, yeah. He's, so I, you guys should recognize these these actors um, from all sorts I, of stuff. So I Googled uh, Superman 2025 and went to news just hoping to find a recent roundup of casting maybe i could see photos of these two actors the top article i found is from space.com about space you know up there where the rocket yeah, ships sure. go there's with, like nasa and stuff the final frontier an article, as i always say space.com is like we need to collect everything that we know about james gunn superman that's space related enough <laughs> <laughs> i mean he is an alien he's a, he's a space he alien is. <laughs> One of our top space guys. <laughs> what do you think the S means on our website? <laughs> <We're making space. laughs> the S. He's sponsored. The space. S stands for space.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to whatever comes out of James Gunn's uh, new Superman movie, as well as the rest of the DCU. Uh, speaking mm -hmm. of Superman, uh, we got our first look at My Adventures with Superman Season 2. This is a cartoon that is out on Max, uh, the first season of which is incredible. Highly recommend watching it. Um, it, it is just a phenomenal show. I, I have nothing but great things. The cast is incredible. Uh, it, it's heartfelt. It will tug at your heartstrings. It's just so good. Great. Great stuff. Uh, so I'm excited about season two of that. Melissa, did did, did did how how much of a Tarantino fan are you? 
I haven't been. I saw, I really liked Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I saw Pulp Fiction once in high school and I really don't remember it. Good gotcha. And my, my dad likes the Kill Bills and I've seen maybe an hour's worth of non-consecutive Kill Bill scenes while gotcha. he just channel, channel surfs in and out of those movies. Uh, gotcha. But I, he is one of our more prolific directors. And I yeah. told myself, whatever his next movie is, I do want to hop on board for that one. It's time for me to catch up. So, yeah, I, I like I've what I've seen of his stuff. I've generally liked it. Um, he's stated that he only wants to make 10 movies, period. Mm. Uh, and the one that he was working on most recently was entitled The Movie Critic. And it was set in the same world as Once Upon a Time in Holly here mm-hmm. uh, and he, he had been in talks with uh certain actors to reprise their role from that movie and and stuff like that he had been working on this for a little bit uh but i guess the news came out that he is now abandoning that idea for a movie um so i don't know what that really means beyond that if he's still sticking with his only 10 movie rule mm-hmm. or not or if he's just <clears throat> kind of rethinking it or who knows what about. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting thing. I'm yeah, just like, you that know, was no. that was big news in the film nerd world and speculation yeah. about well, what could come next if he considers both Kill Bill movies one movie. If mm. he made a third one, would he also consider that part of the same previous movie? And it doesn't add to his count of ten. Could he come back to this thing at a later date? Will he abandon the ten? Yeah. Everybody's guessing. <laughs> Uh, so also the last little bit here for our pop culture lightning around Park Chan Wook is developing his film Old Boy into a television series. Um, I, I perked up at this one because I like that movie Old Boy as fucked up as as it is. I've always been Mm -hmm. meaning to read the manga and in fact read that whole trilogy because Oddly hmm. enough, Old Boy is the second part of that trilogy. So I, I right, it seems strange to like start with the second one and only do that one. So um, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I, I am, I am interested in in that one for sure. Uh, the movie Old Boy, of course, has its famous hallway fight scene that then went on to yeah. inspire the Dare da, 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 Devil hallway fight scene on the netflix show so have you checked out the sympathizer yet park ten books current tv series but it is on my list i was like i'm very interested in that uh it just premiered on max recently there's Mm -hmm. probably two or three episodes out by now i watched the first one it's very stylish it's fairly complex there's a lot to keep track of yeah. And I just haven't had like the spare brain space to move on and continue the series yet. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm waiting but for, it's, for it all to stack up so I can binge it. I am excited for the concept of Robert Downey Jr. playing a whole cast of supporting characters. I think right, like yeah. practically every white guy <laughs> you see in the series is Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> under different special effects makeup. Yeah. And that always excites me. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, well, yeah, that's our pop culture lightning round. Uh, I briefly mentioned Sh- Hogan. That's kind of the only thing in my cinema corner uh, recently. I did also since I since I, I had uh, access to a- AMC plus uh, this weekend as I watched that Pan Am uh, show, mm. show. I caught up on a bunch of the Walking Dead spinoffs. Um I've kind of stuck with The Walking Dead for better or for worse. It's had its ups and downs and all that stuff. I have now seen most of the, except for The World Beyond and The Tales from The Walking Dead, which was their anthology series. I've basically seen everything The Walking Dead has uh, made there. And the ones I watched this past week were the Daryl Dixon spinoff, Walking Dead Dead City, which focused on uh, Maggie and Negan, 
Uh, and then the ones who live, which focused on Michonne and Rick. And this was the first appearance of Rick back in the show since he left the main Walking Dead show all that time ago. Um, interesting stuff. I know I've I've spoken to some people recently who have been like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like The Walking Dead kind of lost it and they haven't jumped back on. And now they're doing all these weird spinoffs and all this. Spinoffs are kind of good. They're really good. Um, I liked Daryl Dixon more than I thought. It had a weird kind of religious aspect that I was not super into, but I ended up liking it. Uh, Dead City was pretty good. I enjoyed that one a lot. Some great character development in that. But boy, howdy. The Ones Who Live was incredible. That one was awesome. So good. Um, and Andrew, Andrew Lincoln, who plays Rick, and uh, I n never know how to pronounce her name. Deny Guerrera? I, I don't know her. Uh, how, to, how to say her, her, her name. Th they That's are, what I've heard before. They are just both phenomenal uh, in, in, in that show. It's, it's incredible. So good stuff with that but that's all that's in my uh my cinema corner for this so, time you have a bunch of stuff though on i do list. actually surprisingly i didn't yeah. even put sugar down here because i briefly mentioned sugar in our opening banter to our last review show episode since we've been doing apple april that is a new show on apple tv plus i've been checking out mm -hmm. there's like four or five episodes out still I'm still certain that Colin Farrell is something non-human, <laughs> but we have yet to determine exactly what non-human type of entity he is. Yeah. In the midst of this Hollywood noir crime. What I've really been enjoying is Under the Bridge. This is a new true crime inspired drama on Hulu and okay. through Disney+. Plus. Starring Lily Gladstone and Riley. Keough. Oh yeah, Do okay. You... I've I've heard of it. I don't know much about it. I just remember that there was a Hulu crime show with L mm. Lily Gladstone. Yes, I I in it. So yeah, they showed trailers during the Oscars because they know who their audience is. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> just want more Lily Gladstone. You can come over here to Hulu. Yeah. I really like the show. I think you'd really dig it. It's got big Yellow Jackets vibes to it. Ooh, it's set okay. in this little island town in like British Columbia, Canada in 1997. And Riley Keough plays this girl. She plays a woman who used to live there and she's coming back after like a decade away to write a book and she wants to write a book about the youth of this small island town and what it's like to grow up there. And she happens to arrive at the same time that this girl goes missing mm. and you're following her as the writer. Lily Gladstone is one of the lead detectives and this group of girls. And the, oh, the whole show hinges on the terrible things like 14 year old girls will do to impress each other there. Okay, yeah. So it's even more chilling than yellow jackets. Cause at least then they're like 17. <laughs> this is even right. younger, this is even than younger. That. Like you shouldn't be right. doing and, this just yet. <laughs> right. And it's still got the same like cult mentality. Like the main antagonist is this 14 year old girl who like lives oh, in wow. this. Okay. Yeah. girl lives in this girl's home and wants to be a gangster like she tells a story about how she went to a party saw some girl wearing like a tiffany locket punched that girl stole the locket and put a picture of infamous mobster john Gotti inside the locket that's who <laughs> she wants to be when she grows up she thinks she's like a mafia girl okay and if okay. she like pulls off all these crimes in this little town she will be made. She will get to go to New York and be part of the She can run the town Gotti. or, yeah, right. get out and escape. And yeah. It's so cringy. Like, the delusions <laughs> that these young kids have where they're like, we're, we're even tougher than the Crips. We can make our own game and it'll be more intense than the Crips. 
it's so embarrassing, but that makes it even more chilling that these silly fantasies and daydreams get taken to such a severe degree where it ends up with like real bad fights and deaths and all sorts of mysterious crimes in just this little town. Interesting. Okay. It's got very on, on my list. Yeah. Really nice grungy vibes. Uh, great cinematography, really cool performances. I'm really enjoying Under the Bridge. I cool. That's cool. one that I wish was, I wish I started it later so that I would have more of it to watch instead of sure. just sitting yeah. here waiting until Wednesday night. Understandable. Uh, on the movie front, speaking of Riley Keough, I went to go see Sasquatch Sunset. The only thing I've heard about this is that weird viral marketing where there was like a Yeti in some New York park just chilling or who, who knows what. Like that, <laughs> that, that is all that I know. You haven't seen this trailer? Mm-mm, no, I've not. Oh, I've had to see this trailer like 10 times. I don't know what it is about our completely different entertainment experiences. The poster's been all over the theaters. There's like a big cardboard setup. We're like, you can walk through it like you're a Sasquatch. You haven't seen any of this? No, I wonder if they have a deal with AMC theaters that you are going to and they don't necessarily have as well of one with Regal. I'm sure I could go watch it, but yeah, like has not really made it into any of the trailers or stuff that I've I've seen. It's a movie about a Sasquatch family, a year in the life of a Sasquatch family. And the movie stars only four people. Mm-hmm. It's Riley Keough, Jesse Eisenberg, uh, one of the two directors. It's the Zellner brothers uh, who did this movie I really like called Damsel. That's a very bizarre pseudo Western. Uh, it's one of those two brothers and then like another performer I'm not familiar with. They're all completely covered in Sasquatch makeup. They are squatches. Absolutely. And there's no okay. other performers in the film. It's just the wilderness and four people completely decked out in special effects makeup. There's no dialogue. Huh. There's just like grunting and ooks. And they just sort of pantomime things. And it's both a rowdy comedy okay (laughs) and you know with like sex and uh, farts and stuff like that it's like very (laughs) scatological but also surprisingly has a real core emotional journey to it there's real moments of tension and danger danger and poignancy uh i was really impressed by sasquatch it's sunset it's my type of weird thing interesting <laughs> it's a very melissa sort of I, film uh, I, I can't get out of my head the like dialogue list like life day wookie celebration oh yes and i love it's that very much that, i love but that also, thing also the the geico cavemen <laughs> like that i don't i don't know why i'm thinking but of like that, they're but like... <laughs> they're civilized they like play tennis and stuff and they right, speak yeah. human language these yeah. folks do not uh riley keogh and sasquatch sunset so far my performance of the year for 2024 interesting okay yes huh. <laughs> see it it's only like an hour and a half i saw it at 420 on 420 and I was nice. ho- and like, this is a real Blazing. stony baloney kind of movie. I was hoping for more of that energy in the theater. I didn't it's get not, it, unfortunately. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw that. I saw Abigail. Have you seen trailers for Abigail? I've seen trailers. That one's not uh, not for me. I don't really care about little vampire ballerina girl. I like vampires like I that's a type of monster I will always go out for. I like zombies do nothing for me. You're talking about Walking Dead, and I'm just hearing like the teacher and Charlie Brown go. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> but, it, but I'll show up for any kind of a vampire you have. This movie was directed by the team that did Ready or Not. Mm-hmm. You remember, remember when we watched one. that movie? Yep. And they did the last couple Scream movies. 
it's fairly fun. Oh, I, d- I had a decent time. I, I've, I, I, I've heard decent things about, about it. That decent. It's pr- pretty yes. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I watched the movie and I felt like my mom and that I was like, you don't have to swear so much. You uh, really don't have to swear. So it's th- in spaces where it felt like there could have been jokes. They rely too much on characters just saying, what the fuck? Fuck no. Fuck this. I'm out of here. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> and I'm like, none of that's really a punchline, but okay. Yeah. Uh, this is the only movie I've ever gone to where I got to fill out a cinema score card. Have oh. you ever gotten to do that? No. It's there's somebody waiting outside the theater. And as you go in, I saw this like opening night, Friday, seven o'clock. So I guess that was like the right time frame to hit it at. And at yeah. like a major local AMC, they give you a little card and that's got like these sort of perforated tabs on it. And you fold mm-hmm. back the tabs and it's just like d- gender, age, demographic. Uh, what's the letter grade you'd give this movie? Why did you see this movie? Is it like director, actor, premise? Uh, you like this sort of genre? Would you rent this movie and would you buy this movie? Just like very basic overview of what the audience reaction was. I hear about these things all the time. But this is the first time I've ever gotten to do one. Yeah. Interesting. A, a, a solid B. Happen. A B for Abigail. <laughs> Abigail. <laughs> Abigail, not A for Abigail. Okay. Uh, and then about, yesterday, uh, Boy Kills World. That's a, one you, that Rachel and I have on our list. Not because we're super interested in like the premise or anything, but she's a big Bob's Burgers fan. So the fact that he's yes. his voice is in that is just like yes. Maybe we should see that. <laughs> <laughs> It is. I went to see this yesterday with my brothers. It's it's fun. It is very wacky. There's a lot of different comedic games being played throughout the movie. Okay. Like how this character uh, to distract himself from all his pain and in his discomfort while he's undergoing this warrior training, he reads through the whole dictionary. So in his voiceover throughout the movie, he's like picking out a word and like defining the word that like applies to the situation Webster's dictionary defines gruesome as <laughs> something like that yeah so there's a lot of different repeating jokes and patterns and things like that for you to follow okay uh, it is it is pretty wild although in I the mean, last I went to go it's... see silent night with with joel kick hey <laughs> kinnaman so i feel like this also kind of fits in with that just like ridiculous gun yes, action yes. fights and, uh, yeah <laughs> and this one is like a lot more overtly a comedy although in like mm, okay. the last chunk of it like it keeps like the action pace pretty ramped up but a lot of the jokes kind of go away in the third act and i miss sure, the yeah. jokes uh, it it, it kind of makes it once you stop laughing, you realize how the movie does feel a little long. But there's fun stuff in it. Okay. Um, the girl from the Happy Death Day movies is in it. And oh, I okay. really liked her. Cool. I still I still want them to make a third one of that. I'd like that. Yeah. yeah. Indeed, uh, indeed. And then. Just wanted to check in. Uh, have you seen any fun trailers lately? Because I've seen a couple trailers of note that I wanted to bring up. To be honest, not really. There was one like um, I, I, I guess the ones that really wowed me. There's a new Star Wars show coming out, uh, Tales of the oh. Empire. Um, and they, they did Tales of the Jedi uh, last year. Uh, and we were hoping for a season two of that. And at the end, they they brought up the Tales of the Jedi logo, but then it burned out and it said Empire in, in, okay. in, instead. Um, so I, I it's an a, a animated show kind of fo- following on all the stuff they've done in Clone Wars and Rebels and Bad B- B- Batch and stuff like that. And that trailer was phenomenal. Um the only other one I haven't like sat down to actually watch it. There's the the new one from the director of uh, Poor Things. 
uh, kindness. Yes, kinds or, of kindness. Or, uh, yeah. So I, I saw clips of that. I haven't sat down to see the actual full trailer yet. Um, but that mm. was kind of the only other like recent one that has caught my attention. Yeah, um, that's a fun trailer. It's a, I know it's an anthology movie where it's a bunch of little short stories. So you, okay. I, you can't really get any sense of a plot from the trailer, but I like the I mood you. of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, trailers out for the new M. Night Shyamalan thriller Trap coming out later this year that I'm very excited for. There you go. It's a thriller set at a concert. Uh, and apparently the like fake pop star within this world is played by one of his other daughters. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. You know, in addition to Ishana Night Shyamalan having her feature directorial debut this year with The Watchers. Yeah. Big year for the Shyamalan family as a whole. Yeah, indeed. I won't say much more about that. It is a trailer that... I've heard some people say it gives too much away and I've heard other people say, yeah, but if it showed you that much, then it must have even more up its sleeve. There's no way what we are seeing is the entirety of the it's, story here. It's so wild. The rap that he's gotten of just like yeah. he's the director with a twist. So interesting stuff. There's a. There was a movie a couple years ago called Speak No Evil. I want to see it was I want to say it was maybe a Danish movie mm -hmm. somewhere in Europe and it's being remade. And again, I've also heard people complain like, why is it being remade? You know, the original movie actually had a decent amount of English dialogue in it. This feels unnecessary. But it's on my radar. It's a movie about, I think, two couples who meet while they're on vacation. And one of the mm -hmm. couples is like, hey, we don't live too far from here. Do you guys want to come by, like spend a night at our house after we've met at this resort or whatever? Come by. We'll host you for a weekend before you go home. And the other couple's like, OK, you know, these people seem nice. This, this could be a fun adventure. Sure. And there's just a lot of tension where they're like, is there something weird going on with this host family? Or like, have we misinterpreted something? Are we reading too much into it? Like, have we... You know, is this all in our heads? Like, is there actually anything dangerous going on? And it's yeah. like a psychological thriller. It's a thriller of manners, almost. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. And I'm interested in this because the guest couple is played by Scoot McNary and Mackenzie Davis. Okay. Yeah. Good old Scoot which McNary. Is, <laughs> right. Which is fun because I love both of their performances in Halt and Catch Fire. Yeah. And they're two of the characters who don't have any sort of relationship dynamic with each other the, as neither romantic partners or business partners, yeah. which is pretty much on the level of romantic partnership. That's how Halt and Catch Fire works. Uh, <laughs> so I'm excited to see those two performers I really like in a new dynamic with each other. Cool. Good. Uh, yeah. And then the, the, the creepy dad of the other couple is James McAvoy. There you go. Yeah we've also really enjoyed in review show past yesterday when i saw boy kills world we saw a trailer for an indian action movie that takes seemingly takes place entirely on a train okay which is a variant of a hallway fight i suppose what's a train but just a very long hallway on sure wheels. yeah yeah it really intense action the screen's flashing with all sorts of like recommendations and accolades. And it finally gets to the title of the movie and the movie is just called kill <laughs> kill, <laughs> which really seals the deal. If your movie's just plain old called kill, I'll buy a ticket. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I saw a trailer for the wild robot, which is a DreamWorks animated movie coming out later this hmm. year. Starring Lupita Nyong'o, I believe, as the robot. I mean, the robot's okay. mouth doesn't move. So when you hear her talk in the movie, I'm like, I'm going to presume she is the robot and she's not like a narrator. But it's I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it's a movie about a robot who I guess gets lost in the woods and has to and is not programmed to interact with wildlife, but learns how to do it and learns how to protect all these cute animals. Huh. And it looks like a real tearjerker, 
the real next step in the evolution of Iron Giant and Wally. Mm, yeah. Which I know is a movie your partner really likes. So I wanted to make sure this was on your radar. Okay. Uh, this the is our new robot. tear, the new tear jerker robot movie for the 2020s. Robot used for emotional manipulation. <laughs> Put that on our bingo cards. <laughs> Oh, robot. Now I've got so many feelings. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, most I know we kind of have a hard out uh, for a little bit because you're uh, about to go see Challengers. Um, I, yeah, that is on the docket. I, I, yeah, I that one's an interesting one. I I, I don't know if I want to go see that in theaters, but I've also heard such a good reception to people who have seen it and like, this is one of my top movies of the year. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Uh, And like, I, I, I'm not necessarily interested in it. I might watch it when it comes on streaming, but I don't know. So this seems like a, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say after you go check it out. This seems like a theater viewing. Just for the, I've heard the movie's got a real electric energy to it. It seems good Mm -hmm. to watch with a crowd. Part of the joy of going to see a movie is to see who else is there in the theater with you. Yeah. What rowdy teens will you have when you go see Challengers? Yeah. I don't know. It just, I like, not, like, I I, I can't really point to a specific thing and, be, be, be like and that's why i don't want to go see it right it just it's just kind of a swirl of i don't know i i just haven't been feeling that one but then i'm also kind of i, I kind of have the fomo of like but everyone says it's real good i don't know <laughs> remember so. it's from the director of suspiria yep yeah. mm-hmm. indeed indeed I don't know, but I hope you enjoy enjoy it. Uh, I hope it is a good one and all of that. Uh, I I say we wrap things up there. Uh, I, I there. Had, I yeah. I I I had one more question, but I can save that for whenever. Um. So yeah, and it's it's a it's a funny one. So. Maybe we'll we'll uh, talk about the spittle ratio in Hollywood and if that has gone up or not. Uh, in oh, in Hollywood, years. I didn't know. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know if you were asking just about us. If you tracked how much spittle we how much generated I, on I the spit. podcast. No, yeah. I j- just to give you a k- kind of a brief uh, hint at what we'll be talking about next time. I g- guess. Yeah, been watching a lot of stuff recently where I feel like characters when they get emotional, just spitting, drooling, snot out of their nose. I like. And it, mm. it happens like maybe you've been in a situation where you've cried that much or that h- h- hard or you're in some kind of emotional situation like that. But I feel like it's almost gotten to a point where it is ridiculous. Like it's like, mm. all right, look, yeah, sure. He might have a runny nose when he's crying. But oh, my God, what is coming out of his nose? Like <laughs> what is happening here? So that's yeah. <laughs> maybe we'll talk about that next time get look forward to ta- talking about snot next time <laughs> next time <laughs> next time snot talk <laughs> yeah exactly exactly uh but let's wrap things up right there so melissa where can the people find you on the internet you can find me uh i have had accounts on twitter instagram others at wilkywit w-i-l-k-y-w-i-t I I haven't posted in quite a long time, but I may be located there yeah. for the purpose of direct messaging. I don't indeed. know. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. Uh, if you guys want to follow me, I am at yo Kyle Springer. Uh, and if you would like to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at the whatnots, we are at the whatnots official on threads. So please go like, share and subscribe. That would help us out a ton. If you are watching this on YouTube, Go check out more of our videos right over there on that side of the screen. That would help us out a ton as well. Uh, But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. This has been number 271 of the Whatnots Captain's Log. We'll see you next time. Bye.
Bye.